Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Do you need help with your cat, Ryan? I do, but there's nothing you can do about that. I just (laughs) hope he's not too large of an asshole while we do this. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Bonske preview for the upcoming Kyushu Basho. The Bonske is going to be coming out uh, this upcoming weekend in about five days. So we're going to know the results of all of this pretty soon. Uh, creating this Bonske, I, it's it's an interesting one. We're back to kind of that that log jam at the top scenario, Jake, that we had for quite a while uh early part of last year i think where there's just a lot of people that need to go in like the top three or four ranks Mm -hmm. but not enough spots to fill it out and then that has kind of uh repercussions throughout the remainder of the bonds k for the most part yeah and uh because i know that you mentioned the other day that uh you were also having a a pain in the ass fall here so far i decided i wanted to bring a gimmick to this episode Always fun or Ryan, not I'm guessing not <laughs> Ryan. What would be your absolute favorite thing for me to bring to a podcast episode to surprise you with? Uh, my favorite thing like money, Activity. like a written check, a quiz, <laughs> a quiz. I actually had uh, our fellow podcast hosts toss together a few questions. So every oh. rank, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't Mac know. Mac and the- Flarick did work. I told them to do hard but not impossible questions. Oh, my God. Okay. I have absolutely zero idea what to expect, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so every every rank we're going to, uh, let's see, up through, we'll have one up through roughly Maegashira 13 or so. Uh, How about we just started at Maegashira 1 and skip the Sanyaku? Okay, that's fair, because we'll probably just burn through the Sanyaku, won't we? Yes, we at least faster than a lot of the Magashira. That so, is correct. But for the refer- for the record, this is not a quiz for you. This is a competition quiz because I also don't know the questions. Mm, this seems sus. Immediate <laughs> immediately calling suspicion on the whole proceedings in case I lose at the end. Ah, uh, oh, that kind of sus. Got it. All right. The kind of well, sus where you want to hedge your bets and you know make sure that uh when it goes wrong. Well, you're the one with all the questions, and who's to say you didn't look up the answers? I mean, you're <laughs> that's that's fair, but not correct. <laughs> let let me just one more time get out of the way. Very impressed with Mac and Flarick actually providing you with some work for a Bonds K episode. So shout outs to those guys. Indeed. For knowing these episodes exist. Unless their questions suck, in which case uh, everything taken back immediately yeah you asked for hard not impossible my guess is they're all going to be impossible (laughs) yeah we'll see what all right what rank did this wrestler you've never heard of get in uh the spring tournament of 1962 or something like that yeah Yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens all right well i guess we need to speed through the sanyaku so we can get to these questions (laughs) and and see what we have in store so we'll start look at look at him pretend not to be excited (laughs) yeah uh But real quick, for those watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, please, and thank you. Uh, Uh, We have – yeah, we're we're content creators. It it comes with the We're influencers now, right, Ryan? Yeah, that's right. We we are sumo influencers. (laughs) Uh, So we have my prediction that is completely blacked out at this time. As we go through these ranks, Jake is going to unveil who I have predicted to fall at each each rank and next to that we have the results of the Aki Basho just for easy reference of anybody that is watching along so we will start with the Yokozuna rank as we always do and of course that is Tara no Fuji alone at the top at Yokozuna East Takake show did win a U show uh, but I'm pretty sure that that combined with his previous Basho of I'm trying to pull up and I'm very sad that I don't immediately remember what it was off the top of my head oh and yeah this is new low for you sumo db is down but it wasn't uh, (laughs) it wasn't a good bot i think he might have sat out did he sat out of nagoya he might have sumo db is down you can't ask me questions like this (laughs) that was a whole basho ago (laughs) hold on in when in doubt 
uh, Wikipedia is there. For, yeah, he, he sat out of July. So, yeah. yeah, the combination of him winning a U show with 11 wins uh, in conjunction with a zero win Nagoya was not enough for a Yokozuna promotion for Taka K show. I'm not will shocked. that will that be the same case after the November Basho? We will see. So at the Ozeki rank at Ozeki one on the east side, we have. Taka Keisho, of course, he had the most wins of any Ozeki, so he gets to be the highest ranking Ozeki. And then we have Kirishima dropping from the Ozeki 1 East to the Ozeki 1 West rank, as Taka Keisho had better record than him. But Kirishima had a better record than our Ozeki 2 West, Hushoryu, who will remain the lowest ranked Ozeki after having the worst record amongst the Ozeki. And of course, there will be no Ozeki 2 West. East to balance out things with Terano Fuji being alone, the lone Yokozuna on the east side. We will slide down to the Sekiwake ranks where nothing happens. Daisho was the top ranked Sekiwake and he had the best record amongst the Sekiwake, so he will remain the top ranked Sekiwake as Sekiwake won east. And then Wakamoto Haru and Kotonowaka had identical records. And they're not going to swap places. So Wakamoto Haru will remain Sekiwake 1 West, and Koto Nowaka will remain Sekiwake 2 East. Not a whole lot of movement going on so far. And of course, we are not going to have a Sekiwake 2 West. Both of our Komosubi had losing records. So pretty long shot that they're going to force open a new Sekiwake slot with a maximum of six wins between those two. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the next guys to move up didn't have didn't get like 14 wins or something like that either so like that's not gonna yeah. do anything special either there the the most impressive case for creating a new sekiwake rank was a tommy fuji with 11 wins at migashira 15 not Probably quite not sure gonna he's it. gonna make it yeah yeah i don't think so so at Komosubi, as I mentioned, we are finally going to have some changes on this Bonske as both of our Komosubi last time had losing records in Nishikigi and Tobizaru. And not only did they have losing records, they had at least nine losses. So they have to drop from the Sanyaku ranks. There's no chance that one of them will uh, be lucky and stay at Komosubi with just a seven and eight record. Both of them have to fall out of the Sanyaku ranks. So we've got to figure out who is going to take those two Komosubi slots. And there are three candidates for who could fill those ranks, but not all three of them will be promoted to Komosubi. We're starting to see the log jam right here. So, or at least I believe all three will not be promoted to Komosubi. It'll take something very weird for that to happen. But we have Hokuto Fuji, who is Maegashira 1 East with an 8 and 7 record. Abi, who is Maegashira 2 East with a 9 and 6 record. And Asano Yama, who is Maegashira 2 West with a 9 and 6 record. By our typical math, Abi and Asano Yama deserve to be Komosubi over Hokuto Fuji. But we know that if you're ranked Maegashira 1 East and you have a winning record, you are going to be promoted to the Sanyaku rank. So Hokuto Fuji is a shoe in for one of those two Komosubi slots. And the second spot would go to Abi by virtue of him having been Maegashira 2 East to Asanoyama's Maegashira 2 West. So Abi was ahead of Asanoyama. They both had the same record. Asanoyama is not going to jump over Abi. So since Abi deserves to be higher ranked than Hokuto Fuji, I'm going to have him ranked as the Komosubi East, and I'm going to put Hokuto Fuji at Komosubi West. The only crazy thing that could disrupt this plan is if the Bonske committee kind of goes off the rails. Maybe they're doing a little bit more drugs than usual when they're putting together the Bonske, and they decide, hey, Abi and Asanoyama both deserve to be ahead of Hokuto Fuji. They should take the two open Komosubi ranks. But Hokuto Fuji was 8-7 and seven from Maegashira 1, so let's create a third Komosubi slot uh, for him, and we'll have three Komosubi this Basho. Now, do not think that is going to happen. I uh, had a similar situation on Haru of 2022, where we had one Komosubi rank that was opened up, and there were two contenders to fill that spot, an 8-7 and seven, Maegashira 1 East and a 9-6 and six, Maegashira 2 East. In that Basho, the Maegashira 1 East took the open Komosubi rank, and the 9 and 6 Maegashira 2 East had to settle for the top Maegashira rank. And I think that's exactly what we're going to come, what's going to happen here. I don't think there's really any way that they're opening up a third Komosubi slot uh, to allow all of these guys in. It just hasn't happened in the past, and it's not going to happen this time either. Gotcha. So, yeah, I, that kicks Asanoyama down. 
Uh, we're not going to have any extra Komusubi, just one extra Sekiwake because all three of those guys have to stay there. Yep, we're going to, I believe we're going to keep the same structure of the Sanyaku ranks as we had the last Basho. So, Jake, we're getting to Maegashira 1. How about you hit us with the first quiz question? How about we do it this way? Let's do a question, and then let's talk about that rank, and then we'll give the answer so people can play along with a little bit of time to think about it. Okay. So, before we do Maegashira 1, I'll read question number one. Before we do Maegashira 2, I'll give the answer and the next question. Okay. Okay, so of these items, what is not placed in the square hole carved at the center of the dohyo between the Shikiri Sen? So this is like part of the dohyo building ceremony. They uh, they bury a few things in the middle of the of the dohyo. So which of these things is not part of that ritual? Dried nuts, dried plums, salt, washed rice, dried squid or cuttlefish, and dried seaweed. <laughs> You read those one more time for me. Dried nuts, dried plums, salt, washed rice, dried squid or cuttlefish, dried seaweed. I feel like okay. the squid and cuttlefish, like Ryan and Flair or or Mac and Flair wouldn't necessarily think like that big of a curveball, would they? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think so. That one's like too specific. Yeah. I feel like salt and rice are probably gimmies. They gotta what's, be in there. What's the rules in this quiz on Google? For uh, us. Don't. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, at least for me, I feel like nuts, plums, and seaweed are the ones I'm going to be picking between. Okay. I have also a... have I have mine, but I'm not giving anything away. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll get back there after our next rank. All right. Shira 1. Maiga Shira 1 at the, on the east side. I'm going to have Asanoyama there as I have him being snubbed for the Komosubi rank. So at least he should end up as the top Maiga Shira. And if he gets any sort of winning record, will re-enter the Sanyaku ranks for the first time since July of 2021, I believe. Wow. It's not July of 2020, is it? I don't think so. I think July of 2021. Yeah, I think so. Because a, a year out and then about a little over a year to get back. That sounds right. Yeah. And then at Maegashira 1 West, after placing Asanoyama, there really is only one other Rikshi that deserves the rank of Maegashira 1, and that is Ura, who went 9-6 and six from Maegashira 4. So my answer is going to be the plums for the quiz. Um, I'm going to go with nuts. All right. And the answer... You got it. Plums. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. We were just talking about that this weekend when we were hanging out. That's like. Oh, weird. Why would I say that if if you had just mentioned that it annoyed you a lot? Weird. Yeah, I did that. I know. But it's caught on with Flarex so deeply that like it's it's like seeping into the rest of us now. Mm -hmm. OK, so question number two. In what year was the dohyo size increased from 13 feet in diameter to 15 feet in diameter? Okay. I know that those... Options? No, we do not have options. <laughs> oh, okay. So just let's, impossible then. Okay. Let's Maybe just say... Uh, let's just say whoever's closer. Even if you go over, not Price is Right rules, but just let's say whoever's closer. Um, okay. I'll talk... Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll give our answers when we get to uh, the next... Uh, the next break here. So, all right, rank number two. Rank number two. So, my Gashira two. I had mentioned there was a little bit of a log jam at Komosubi, but that kind of worked itself out at my Gashira one. But now at my Gashira two, we're going to have a log jam that's going to affect us for a bit longer. So, we have to fill out the rest of the joy. And there are five more Rikshi with winning, winning records that deserve to be in the joy. And there are an additional two Rikshi with losing records that don't deserve to drop out of the joy. So, that's a total of seven Rikshi that deserve to be in the joy, but only five spots remaining. So, some people are either going to be under promoted or over demoted and not in the joy when they deserve to be. So, Looking at specifically the Maegashira 2 rank, there are four Rikshi that deserve this rank. They are Meisei, 
Shodai, Gonoyama, and Takayasu. So Shodai and Meisei were previously in the Joy, while Gonoyama and Takayasu were outside of the Joy. So I am going to be putting Shodai and Meisei at the Maegashira 2 rank. I have to believe that Joy bias still exists, even in the face of the last Bonske that showed that Joy Rikshi got little to no preferential treatment. Like I said in the review episode for The Last Bonds K, I'm going to try not to overreact to what happened in that one Bonds K and stick with what's historically happened. So I'm going to give Shodai and Meisei preferential treatment of previously having been in the bye. Besides, if we follow the standard tie-breaking rules for these four Rikshi, then Takayasu and Gonoyama would end up at the Maegashira 2 rank, and Shodai, who went 8-7 and seven for Maegashira 3 East, would remain at Maegashira 3 East, which isn't going to happen. No, right. And, and then Meisei would be over-demoted by one rank, which what I've noticed, to me at least, it seems like the Bonsuke committee tries to avoid over-demotions more than they try to avoid under promotions. So I don't think either Takeyasu or Gonoyama is going to go ahead of Meisei either, because I think that's avoidable, and I think Meisei is going to have some joy bias on his side. So between Shodai and Meisei for the east and west sides, Shodai was previously on the east side, Meisei was on the west side, easy enough. Landing at Maegashira 2 east, I have Shodai, and landing at Maegashira 2 west, I have Meisei. Gotcha. So... So circle back to the doyo question increasing in size from 13 meters to 15 meters or feet or 13 feet. But I know those are, those are approximations because it's uh, it's not exactly on a certain number of feet. I'm going to say that with a lot of changes happening in the beginning of the 20th century, this is probably one of those. I'll say probably like 1910. My thoughts was, a lot of stuff happening around World War II and like the original Kokuki Khan getting uh, destroyed or something like that during the war. Maybe something changed around that time. So I was thinking like 1945. That's another point for Ryan. The correct answer Ooh. is 1931. Okay. So I was 20 years off. You were like uh, 14 or so. Sweet. There you go. All right. Question number three. What is the finely brushed area outside of the Tawara called? Okay, I got it. I do not. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, okay, well, let's we'll see. see if, we'll see if Jake can pull it out of his ass by the time I'm done talking about the Maegashira 3 rank. I mean, I could, like, problematically, like, make up a Japanese word or something like that. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. We'll find out after Maegashira 3. Yeah, but we'll try to avoid that if possible. So we're left with looking at the two guys that didn't quite make it for the Maegashira 2 rank, and that's Takayasu and Gonoyama. So at Maegashira 3, Takayasu would have the tiebreaker over Gonoyama for the next spot due to him having 10 wins to Gonoyama's 9. But there is one other Rikshi I think we need to consider uh, before we just decide to put Takayasu at Maegashira 3 East, and that Rikshi is Toby Zaru. Uh, Toby Zaru went 6-9 and nine from the Komosubi rank. So we're still in the first year of Asakayama, the former Kayo, being in charge of Bonsuke creation instead of Isekahama, and I'm, I'm still uncomfortable with how they treat Rikshi that are dropping from the Sanyaku rank. So under Isekahama, they would always seemingly go ahead of Rikshi that deserved to be a rank or two ahead of him that had been like outside of the joy. But under Asakayama, they have been ranked more or less according to the math, with the exception being the last Basho when Abi went ahead of Asanoyama. Uh, that being said, I'm going to look at an eerily similar case from the Haru Basho of this year when Asakayama was in charge of the Bonske committee to see if I can figure out how to handle this Takayasu Tobizaru situation. So. In the Haru Basho, Takayasu went 10 and 5 from Maegashira 7 rank, and Tobizaru went 6 and 9 from the Komosubi rank. And that's not a mistake. That's not me reading what happened well, at this it, Basho. It, <laughs> These guys were both at the same rank as they were this Basho in the Haru Basho, and what? they both had the same record this Basho as they did in the Haru Basho. <laughs> what the hell? That's incredible. I think the only difference was that Takayasu is Maegashira 7 West to uh, to his Maegashira 7 East this time. That's, that's like one of those things where you're like, okay, whoever's writing, whoever's doing the writing here, just like 
accidentally copied and pasted but didn't update the details or something. Yeah, the pages got stuck together or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in that Basho, like this Basho, Takeyasu deserved to be one rank ahead of Toby Zaru. Back in March, I predicted that Toby Zaru would go ahead of Takeyasu, but the Bonsuke committee put Takeyasu ahead of Toby Zaru, ignoring any sort of possible uh, Sanyaku bias. To Takeyasu is completely out of the joy, but he still went ahead of Toby Zaru. Uh, so I'm hoping we get a little bit of consistency from the Bonsuke committee because I'm going to follow their direction from the Haru Basho, which means I'm putting Takeyasu at my Gashira 3 East. And then at Maegashira 3 West, we have to have the same conversation for Gonoyama because Gonoyama deserves to be the same rank as Takeyasu, which is one rank ahead of Tobizaru. So we need to figure out, does Gonoyama also go ahead of Tobizaru? But I don't think it's going to happen in this case, and I think Gonoyama will hit some tough luck. Like I said before, one of my beliefs is that we should prioritize avoiding over demotions instead of under promotions. And if we put Gonoyama ahead of Tobizaru at this spot, then Tobizaru would end up landing at Maegashira 4, and he would be over demoted by one rank, as based on his 6 and 9 record, he would only deserve to drop three spots uh, from the Komosubi rank. So because of me wanting to avoid an over demotion for Toby Zaru, I'm going to be placing him at the Maegashira three West rank to prevent the over devotion. Uh, Makes sense to me. So Jake, we'll have you answer this question first. See if you've come up with anything. I have literally nothing. Uh, I believe it is the Janome. Uh, it's like snake eyes or something like that. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're gonna be like that. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so this one this next one. I um, of the snake. Yep, I was even right on the English uh translation. I of the yes, snake. That's frustrating. So this next one I do know how to check. So I think um let's see. So the question is who was the forty seventh Yokozuna? Boo. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I I have a I, I can look up a list and just see the order. So let's see if you guess a Yokozuna. Let's let's. If if you guess whoever's Yokozuna, whoever's closest. closest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like if I guess the 45th and you guess the 59th or something, I'm closer yeah. to 47. So let's see. What number's is Terano Fuji? I think he's 73. 73. Yeah. Yeah. So. I know Hakuho is 69th. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go. Okay, I think I got my answer, but it's going to be one of those where I'm like pretty sure it's like right in the right era, but there's no way I'm going to get it dead on. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same thing. Um, do we want to give our answers now and then answer? And Might then as well, because this yeah. one is just kind of a guessing game. Yeah. Who are you thinking? I just like Taiho feels. Oh, like that's what I was gonna say. Far enough back. <laughs> we can share the point. We can share. We can. We can call this that. That wouldn't be fair to force you off of your well, pick. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. Let's talk about Magashira Four, though. All right. So the log jam that we built up is gonna clear out here a little bit. Gonoyama is the Rikshi that deserves to be ranked the highest that is left. So I have him getting only a minor promotion of one rank after his nine and six record from Maegashira five to the Maegashira four East rank. Somebody had to get unlucky in this situation. I think he is going to be the one that will draw the short straw, but this will still get him into the last spot of the joy because if my counting is correct, I think he should be number 16 on the overall order of the Bonds K. Yeah. Are there anybody up there that can't face each other? Um, Possibly. I don't feel like thinking that hard right now. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, but Gonoyama, yeah. four East. Yeah. But no matter what, Gonoyama is within the joy. He's within the top 16. So at Maegashira for West, there was one other Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira 3 alongside Toby Zaru. But as he was outside of the joy in the Akibasho, he had no case to have gone ahead of anybody else that we've placed at this point. But he is now the Rikshi that deserves the highest rank of the Rikshi yet to be placed, and that is Onosho. So I have him easily landing at Maegashira 4 West, jumping up only two ranks after his 9-6 and six record from Maegashira 6. Gotcha. 
All right. Who is the 47th Yokozuna, Jake? Oh, damn it. I almost said this one. Kashi Wado. I, I, that was a name I was trying to think of. And I think that was the name I was trying to think of, but I couldn't come up with it. He's the guy that um, was promoted like at the same time as Taiho or like really close to it. Um, let's see. Yeah, they were promoted in the same Basho. Um, oh, okay. So, so we were off had, by one. So we were off by us. one. Yeah. Kudos to us. No kidding. What is, what is Taiho? Is he 46 then? He is 48th. So technically, Kashiwato, okay. then Taiho. Um, okay. I wonder, Kashiwato started earlier. I wonder if that's part, I don't know, it doesn't matter. He's a five Yusho guy compared to Taiho's 32, but mm. I definitely remember this from reading about Taiho way back in the day that Kashiwato was like, they weren't necessarily equal in terms of results, but like Taiho always regarded him as the guy that like pushed him to be his best. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, very cool. I was I was really thinking that because I was like, if Taiho feels like the right era and I don't think Ryan's going to pull Kashiwato out of his butt. No. Um, okay, so that means that we are on to our next question. The four animals associated with the four spirits of direction and their colors are what? Okay. I know the four colors and I know the four animals. I'm not sure I can pair them up, but um, we'll see when we get there. Yeah. What I can do. We'll see how it goes. I feel like we're going to get uh, we're going to get like really close and then miss like the last one somehow. Yeah. All right. Maiga Shira five rank. So we're still a little backed up at this point because we're at Maiga Shira five. And there was one more Rikshi that deserved to be ranked at Maiga Shira four that we haven't mentioned yet. And that is Midori Fuji who went 10 and five from Maiga Shira nine. But we have another Rikshi dropping from the Komosubi rank that we need to consider. Uh, and that is Nishkigi, who deserves to be one rank behind Midori Fuji. So now we've got to kind of play that little dance one more time. Should Nishkigi go ahead of Midori Fuji or not? As Nishkigi was in the Sanyaku ranks, Midori Fuji at Magashir 9, well outside of the joy. So if we put Midori Fuji ahead of Nishkigi at Maigashira 5 East, then Nishkigi would be over demoted by a half rank since he was previously on the East side, which I don't really know if that is as much of a deal to the Bonsuke committee, if they only care about like the numerical drop or if they're super serious about, hey, he was Komosubi East. We can't. We don't want him to drop to Magashira 5 West because that's a half rank over demotion. Or if they're just like, nope, that's a drop of five. That's fine with the math. Who cares? Uh, but I'm going to prevent it anyways in my prediction. I'm going to put Nishkigi at Magashira 5 East and Midori Fuji at Magashira 5 West. I still got to believe that there is some sort of uh, bias for these higher ranked Rikshis as opposed to these Rikshis that were outside of the joy and didn't fight anybody within the Sanyaku ranks. Uh, a man's uh, got to have something to believe in. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, joy and, bias but as, might as well be it. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and honestly, there's a big part of me that wants to put Nishkigi even higher ahead of Onosho, despite deserving to be two ranks lower than him, just because it's been almost 10 years since a Komosubi with five wins received a full five rank demotion that I'm proposing for mm. Nishkigi here. But Onosho deserves to be two ranks ahead of Nishkigi. And like I said, one of the things we've been seeing with this Bonske committee is they're following the math a little bit more uh, with these Sanyaku Rikshi that are dropping out of the Sanyaku ranks. So I'm going to trust this honestly wildly inconsistent Bonske committee because they, like, like I said on the review for the last episode, it really seems like they kind of like focus in on one element of ranking for like one bonds K and like, this is how we're doing it this time. Okay. Scrap it. Now we're going to find something new. Cause like two Basho ago, it was, uh, if you had fought somebody within the Sanyaku ranks, you got a little bit better treatment than sure. you would have in previous bonds. Case. Last time it's like, no joy bias doesn't exist. That that's gone. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do this time. They're wildly inconsistent, but that's been somewhat consistent for them. So I'm going to put Nishkigi ahead of me, Dodi Fuji at my Gashira five East. Gotcha. Okay. Um, why don't I go first on this one? Okay. You called out Taiho. Sure. The one that I'm positive on is black turtle. Okay. Then there's also, I'm pretty sure it's blue dragon. The tiger is a color that makes no sense. I'm pretty sure that one's the green one. And then there's red Phoenix. Maybe I think it's a bird. 
Do you have any of those that you would disagree with? Uh, so you had Black Turtle, Blue Dragon, Red Phoenix, Green Tiger. Um, I think that sounds right to me. I think I'm I'm positive on the animals. I'm not as positive yeah. on the colors, but it's I the pairings. I I know it's those four animals, those four colors. I'm Phoenix posi- that might I'm be a posi- different kind of bird, but yeah. I'm I'm positive on black turtle as well. For some reason, that's the one I know. <laughs> that's so weird. Uh, yeah. I'll just I'll just co-opt your answer. I think I think that's right. I was wrong. It's not green tiger. It's is white it white tiger? tiger? God. Ah! <laughs> Should have listened to Power Rangers. <laughs> Oh, I'm mad. I'm mad because that's what I had written down. But then, like, you going first just kind of, like, swayed me. I'm like, no, Jake's smart. He's probably right on that. I don't want to sound stupid I by mean, saying White Tiger. Now I look stupid because I agreed with you. You're beating me so far. I don't know why you're deferring to my answers. <laughs> I'm, I, That's a good point. Okay. The next... It's because I do it all the time. I, like, have something in my mind. It's like, I think this right, but I'm not sure. So then I don't say it because I'm not 100% sure on it. And then it was right. And then I'm, ah, Okay. So the next question is, <laughs> I, I can foresee this happening in two weeks when we're recording our Bonske review and you're like, oh, it's going to put him right there. But no, I had to listen to Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd never listen. To no, that's a good point. That's a bad example. <laughs> uh, next question. Name the six wrestlers who have managed to complete a 10 win comeback after demotion from Ozeki. I think this is just one where we just see who can name more. Yeah, like take turns. I'm not going to get to six. I, yeah. I know I'm not getting to six. Uh, let's. Well, I was gonna say let's write down a list, but I it's gonna be hard for me to do that while talking about the Micah Shear six rank. So I'll do. You write down <laughs> a list, and then I'll just list the ones that I think happened. Okay. All right, Micah Shear six. This is actually the easiest Micah Shear rank that we've had so far. Maybe Damn, besides no more time to think then. <laughs> yeah, maybe besides Micah Shear one. Uh, okay. We have we have two Rikshi that both deserve to be ranked Micah Shear six, and we're outside of the joy. So. We can use our typical tiebreaker rules here. Shonan Naumi went seven and eight from Magashira five west. Hokuseho went ten and five from Magashira eleven west. Both were on the west side, so nobody gets the east west tiebreaker. Hokuseho had more wins, so I'm going to put him ahead of Shonan Naumi at Magashira six east, and I'm going to have Shonan Naumi land at Magashira six west. Okay, so there's <sighs> six Rikshi that have done this. Why don't we take turns? All right. I'll start. You start. I started the last one. All right. Uh, Takake show. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. Did Tochi Notion do it? I thought he did to- it. Tochi Notion. Okay. Th- that I had one and a half on this one out of six that I was sure of. And now there's four names that neither of us are going to be able to remember. No, there, there's. <sighs> I'm mad because I. It starts with a T and he did it twice. And he's won, he won like maybe three U shows. And I want to say it's like Toma something, Tomozura. It's not Tomozura, but I can't quite think of his name. So I mean, I got to count that as an L, but I'm going to, I I think it might be Tochi Azuma. Tochi Azuma. That, that let me, is, let me key. see what the answer key says. Cause yeah. Do you have any others? Cause I don't. <laughs> um, I might say like Chio Taikai, but I don't know that for sure. Those are the three I know for sure. Uh, Tochi Notion and Takakesha were correct. Tochi Azuma was correct. Yeah. Uh, so the other three were Musoyama, uh, oh, Taka no Nami, and Mie no Umi. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Wouldn't nope. have really pulled it. Never would have gotten there, but I'll get a point because I could name an extra one. <laughs> um, oh, because I, I led you all the way to the water that was Tochi Azuma by giving you every single detail about it. I except also let you go first name. and say Takakesha. So. All right. Dad. Also, you gave me one letter, okay? <laughs> I gave you the general gist. Yeah, it's a. It starts with T, and it's like one of those sumo-sounding names. <laughs> and I said Zuma at the end, and it ends with Zuna. So no, it ends with Zuma. So yeah, screw the you. The next I... question. I'm taking that point. I need the, as many as I can get. Fine. Um, how many want... shide hang from a tsuna? Okay. Am I allowed to look at my closet door? No. Damn. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> this is uh, all right. Blinders on. Um, all right, you you should have a little bit more time to think about it this time. There are a couple. Yeah. Okay. Go all ahead. Right. Micah, think about seven. it. 
Think about it silently. My Gashira, seven. So here we're going to get bunched up a little bit more again over these next few ranks. So both the My Gashira seven and My Gashira eight ranks have three Rikshi that deserve to be there. But obviously only two can go to each slot. So we have six Rikshi that are going to be vying for four spots. At My Gashira seven, we have Takanosho, Keen Bozon, and Endo that all deserve to be ranked here. If we follow the tiebreaker rule, Keen Bozon and Takanosho would deserve to be ranked here since they were both on the east side and Endo was on the west side. Based on having more wins with Keen Bozon's nine compared to Takanosho six, Keen Bozon would deserve the east side over Takanosho, but Takanosho was at the tail end of the joy, and he would be over demoted by a half rank if he was placed any lower on this Bonske. So I'm going to give some joy bias here to Takanosho and have him land at the Maigashira seven east rank and Keen Bozon at the Maigashira seven west rank. But once again, very similar to Nish Nishkiki, there is a very large part of me that is wondering, should Takanosho go ahead of not only Keen Bozon, but also Hokuseiho and or Shonan no Umi at Maigashira 6? So Takanosho was part of the joy and only deserved to be one rank below Hokuseiho and Shonan no Umi. We've seen this Bonsuke committee under Asakayama place or give joy bias to Rikshi that deserve to be two or even three ranks lower than Rikshi they ended up ahead of. Uh, ultimately, the reason I'm not going to be putting Takanosho ahead of either Hokuseiho or Shonan no Umi is if we put Takanosho ahead of one or both Hokuseiho and Shonan no Umi, then either Shonan no Umi would be pushed down to Maigashira 7. Say we put Takanosho at Maigashira 6 East and Hokuseiho at Maigashira 6 West. The Shonan no Umi is going to be Maigashira 7, which would be an avoidable over demotion. Um, Two ranks for a 7 and 8. Right. And I say it's an avoidable over demotion because Takanosho deserves to be behind Shonan no Umi. And so by putting Takanosho ahead of Shonan no Umi, sure. we could have avoided that over demotion. Um, or Shonan, we would have to do like Takanosho at Maigashira 6 East and Shonan no Umi at Maigashira 6 West and then put Hokuseiho at Maigashira 7 East, which would be fine for Shonan no Umi. That's a one rank drop. And then Hokuseiho, he's only getting under promoted by one rank, which four rank jump for 10 and 5. That's not bad at all. But then... Shonan Umi would be ranked ahead of Hokuseiho, which he doesn't deserve to be based on some flimsy tiebreakers. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's flimsy at best, but it's it's what I was feeling for this Bonds K. Honestly, if anything happens, I think Takanosho, Maigashira 6 East, Shonan Umi, Maigashira 6 West, Hokuseiho at Maigashira 7 East. Uh, but I'm going to stick with what I have and put Takanosho at Maigashira 7 East. Gotcha. I'm just laying that all out there as just another line of thought in case I am wrong saying I really, really considered this other thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Right. How many Shide hang from Atsuna? You started last question. So let's I just say it first? at the, let's tr say it at the same time. It's just, we're each going to say a number. All right. Uh, I'll do three, two, one, go. I'll do three, two, one. And then after that, we'll say our number. Okay. So it's going to sound like we're bad at counting. Yeah, and it's also going to be not synced because we're on a video call, but it'll be close. <laughs> yeah. All right. Three, two, one, five. Seven. Okay. It's the little light Damn lightning it. bolts, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the paper lightning bolts. Five. God. Ugh. I know it's an odd number. The one, the the thing that was throwing me off is um, um, uh, Sagari are the ones that the like the the cloth strips that hang from mm -hmm. like a regular mawashi and those are a higher but still odd number and i think there's like 11 or 13 of those mm. and i was like i can't picture that with only five things on it but i know it's going to be an odd number <laughs> okay what is the luggage of a sumo wrestler called <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> We'll see if I I'm can not come sure up the with, extra uh, time is going to help me on this one either. I was going to say, let's see if I can come up with a funny answer by the time I get to the end of my Gashira 8. All uh, right. <laughs> I got more joke time than you do, so go yeah, ahead. Go ahead and read. <laughs> At my Gashira 8, uh, since we had Endo as the odd man out of the three Rikshi that deserved to be my Gashira 7, I don't see any reason why he would be jumped by any other Rikshi at this point. So he should end up at my Gashira 8 East. 
Then for Magashira 8 West, we have to choose one Rikshi from the group of three Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Magashira 8 contending for this one spot. That is Mitakeyumi, Miyogiryu, and Atami Fuji. So we should be able to follow traditional tiebreakers for this group. All three were on the east side previously, so that doesn't eliminate anybody. So then we just go with who had the best record. Mitakeyumi had nine wins. Miyogiryu had a sneaky ten wins. Like, if Jake, if I had told you Miyogiryu had ten wins last Basha, would you have believed me? I would say, who is that? <laughs> and Atami Fuji had 11 wins out of those three numbers 11 is the biggest uh, which means I'm going to be putting Atami Fuji at Maegashira 8 West gotcha all right Ryan what do you call a sumo wrestler's luggage bags <laughs> I I was I was trying to work in like you call for help uh, because it's so big I don't know I got nothing uh, the correct answer is a cane case <laughs> Akeni, A K E N I. I think that's just a lost point for both of us. I don't know. I might have been closer. No, <laughs> anyways. Uh, when can a Yokozuna act as a Tachi Mochi? I've got a guess for what that means based on context. And may, may I have a uh, clarifying question? I mean, I don't have anything else to go off of here. What can I? What's a Tachi Mochi? No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out based on the context of the answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mike, we're going to find out real quick because this one's going to go fast. Mike Ashira 9. We're going to follow our typical tiebreaker rules uh, <laughs> for the. Uh, two Rikshi that didn't that deserved to be Magashira eight, but didn't make it there. Uh, so Miyogiryu had more wins than Mitaki Yumi. So I'm putting my Miyogiryu at Magashira nine east and Mitaki Yumi at Magashira nine west. Jake, have we figured out what a Tachi Mochi is? My guess, based on the context, when can a Yokozuna act as X means it's something they're not normally doing. Right. Um, I my guess is that that means like the attendant for a Dohyo Iri. So my guess, when can a Yokozuna do that, is during the 60th birthday Dohyoyiri. Kanreki Dohyoyiri. Yeah. On your 60th birthday, if you were a Yokozuna, you get all dolled up again and do your ring entrance one yeah. last time. That's my guess. I um, think that's a good guess. I would not have come up with that on my own. I was just going to say like uh, something during somebody's retirement ceremony or also like the person who pounds the mochi. Um, <laughs> but I don't know when a uh, Yokozuna would be allowed to pound the mochi. Like, why? Why can't they just do that whenever they want? They're like, I'm Yokozuna. I feel like hammering some mochi today. I am gonna search for this word, but I, I'm gonna say I wasn't quite right. Something at a retirement ceremony. It is something at a retirement ceremony. Oh, but we're going to find out <laughs> what at a retirement ceremony. <laughs> Um, okay, here we go. So if it is like ring attendant or something like that, you know, maybe, maybe we could split the point, but, uh, yes. Okay. So I had the thing, right. But you guessed the occasion, right? I, I think we could share a point there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll call that one even. That one was pretty I good. Liked, yeah. Yeah. Cause you said like an attendant for a dohyo iri, which is like the sword bearer or the dew sweeper, but you mm -hmm. just had the wrong time. I had the right time. I like it. I, so, I think that's fair. Specifically, the Tachi Mochi is the sword carrier. The, Look at us learning things. The Tsuyu Harai is the dew sweeper. I do not. And that harai, guy just kind of doesn't carry anything. He just kind of like walks around, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That one was a cool one, though. Uh, I feel like we did some good work on that. Yeah. Whoop. I like, I like I how we got my, that. I uh, think my, my screen sharing got got screwy i tried zooming in on my other window and it zoomed in on both windows whoops okay our production quality our production quality i'll fix it in post <laughs> i'm not gonna fix it in post no it was brief okay yeah. next question uh true or false the unryu has one loop while the shiranui has two loops okay we'll three two one that at the end of this yeah on a true false and then yeah. we can talk about what it means yes all right next I rank 
All right, my Gashira 10. So we had that group of six Rikshi that all deserve to be ranked my Gashira 7 and my Gashira 8, and they ended up filling up all the ranks from my Gashira 7 to my Gashira 9. Unfortunately, due to that backup of Rikshi at my Gashira 7 and 8, there is one Rikshi that deserves to be my Gashira 9 that will be forced to be over demoted, I believe. And that is Ryuden, who went 6 and 9 at my Gashira 6. I have him landing at my Gashira 10 East. After him, there are no other Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 9 or Maigashira 10. So we're going to clear, be clear of that log jam, and there are no more log jams coming up on this Bonds K. So that one, I feel like, is kind of a forced over demotion. Like, in order to not over demote Ryuden, we'd have to put him ahead of somebody he doesn't deserve to be ahead of. And over demotions do happen. It's not like they don't sure. happen. So I think that is going to happen to Ryuden here. That's just one with less consequence than potentially others. Yeah, exactly. And no, like, uh, protection due to his previous rank. He was a Maigashira sure. 6. People don't care about them like they do. Maigashira <laughs> yeah. 1 through 3 or Sanyaku Rikshi. 6. Ew. <laughs> so, to figure who goes to Maigashira Ted West, we have a group of three Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 11 to deal with. One of them will be ranked slightly higher than they deserve, and the other two will land exactly where they deserve. Kind of nice and clean. Everything's kind of working itself out around this point. So of the three Rikshi that we are looking at, uh, Kota Waiko, Hira de Umi, and Sada no Umi, only one of them was previously on the east side, and that was Kota Waiko. So despite Kota Waiko having only six wins to Sada no Umi's eight wins, I have Kota Waiko taking the Maigashira 10 West rank. Gotcha. Okay, so Unryu is... What's the question? Uh... Unryu has one loop. Shiranui has two loops. Okay. And it's true or false. All right. Three, two, one. True. true. Yeah. All right. So this is the two different styles of Yokozuna adornment. So you can tie your Tsuna belt as a Yokozuna one of two different ways. And I and, and they correspond with the two different versions of the dohyo iri the the ring entrance ceremony the basics are all the same it's just slightly different movements like like one of them you have both your hands out to represent like your all attack and one of them you have one arm out and one arm on your belt is like attack and defense and those correspond to um a knot on the back of the belt with either one big circle loop or two like butterfly wing kind of loops so we both said true the answer is true. Yeah. I For me, I always remember, like, Unryu has one knot, like, un, uno. So Ah, okay. That's pretty good. I believe, wasn't, like, Kakryu the first to have the Unryu knot in quite some time, like most people do, Shida Nui? I feel like we've talked about that in the past. Um, do some research after you ask yeah, this question. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I can't remember if it was him that was different, but like one of them is considered like cursed, but I'm pretty sure that's the one that Hakuho also did. So he like dramatically uncursed it in a way. Mm. I don't know. I think it's, yeah, either way. Uh, they are, they're just two different styles of doing, uh, of doing the Yokozuna belt. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, sorry. Next question. How many times has a wrestler been awarded all the San show for a single Basho performance? How many times? Mm-hmm. Okay. Open ended. So could be a hundred years ago. I don't think they had Sancho that long ago. Uh Maiga Shira eleven. That's actually the next question. No, I Ooh. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Maiga Shira eleven, we're just gonna be resolving the tiebreaker between Sada no Umi and Hira de Umi to figure out which side they belong on. Since they were both on the west side of the Bonske, it will come down to who had more wins. Sada no Umi had eight, Hira de Umi had six. So I have uh, Sada no Umi at Maigashira 11 East and Hira do Umi at Maigashira 11 West. Easy enough. All right. How many Rikshi have walked away with all three Sancho? Okay. I took the first answer the last time that we did one at a time. So why don't you guess first? I think we can just three, two, one this again, just, just in case. All right. Okay. Three, two, one, six. One. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this one is either like zero or a bunch. Um, <laughs> uh, so you guessed one, I guessed six. Uh, it is five times. Ah, I boom. Said that one. 
I don't have the times, but I imagine that it wouldn't be the hardest thing in the world to look up. I want to look up one real quick because I think I might know one instance of when it happened. Did, has any happened like in our era? Oh, no, I was wrong. I thought uh, Ichi Nojo in his debut, Basho might have done it, but he mm. got Shukin Show on Kanto Show. He did not get the Gino Show. Gotcha. I don't think since we've been cup, nobody since we've been covering has gotten all three. Well, actually, <laughs> what I am I joking? Wrong? No, but the next question is at what rank was Takanohana when he did this? Oh, all right. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Uh, next rank. All right. Magashira My- 12. Magashira 12. So I'm finally going to take a bit of a big swing with joy bias on this Bonds K by putting Tamawashi at the Magashira 12 East rank. So he was ranked Magashira 3 and only managed two wins. He deserves to be Magashira 14, but we know that typically these Joy Rikshi with terrible records never fall quite as far as they should. So what I have him doing, I have him jumping ahead of Oho, who des- deserves to be two ranks ahead of Tamawashi, and Takara Fuji, who deserves to be one rank ahead of him. And the reason I'm putting Tamawashi here and not higher, uh, which I strongly considered putting him higher than this, is because... I was considering him for the Magashira 10 West rank next to Ryuden, but if I put him at Magashira 10 West, then we'd be unnecessarily over-demoting Hida to Umi by putting someone who deserves to be three ranks below him ahead of him. So, like I said, with Ryuden, wasn't un- it was unavoidable to over-demote him. Everybody that was placed ahead of him deserved to be ahead of him, but if I had done that with Hida to Umi, it wouldn't be forced, so I'm going to prevent that with possi- when possible. So I'm putting Tamawashi, Magashira 12 East. Like, we've seen a 2 and 13 from Magashira 3 only drop to, like, Magashira 9 in the past based on some circumstances. So seeing Tamawashi go even higher than this would not be unprecedented, but I feel like this is a good spot for Tamawashi to land at. If I remember right, this is one of the things that, like, led us to the concept of, well, led you to the concept of joy bias, too, where it's like, that guy probably should have been lower. Why didn't he? Um, yeah, yeah. I've kind of found that like these two to three win guys kind of are whole fillers. Uh, just like yeah. kind of where pretty somewhere volatile. somewhere between like where they started like the last boss show and where they should end up. If there's a spot where this just like, oh, we've really got to pull somebody up here or over promote or something like that then you put you plug the hole with them. You give them a little bit of bias there. And so uh, Tamawashi is is kind of filling that role here uh, because I believe uh, Oho is the only other Rikshi that deserves to be Maegashira 12. So we would be uh, under demoting Takada Fuji if we put Takada Fuji at Maegashira 12 as well. So we kind of fill a hole uh, sure. at the Maegashira 12 rank. Um Kind of gave away my Gashira 12 West, but that's okay. Because there's only one Rikshi that deserves to be my Gashira 12 for us to place, and that is Oho. He was even previously on the West side of the previous Bonds case, so by putting Tamawashi ahead of him, we're not over-demoting Oho in any way. What was the – oh, it was what rank was Takanohana when he won all three special prizes in a Basho? Yes. Okay, I've got my so- guess. Uh, only real caveat here before taking a guess is that you are ineligible for prizes if you are an Ozeki or a Yokozuna. Oh, shit, really? That changes my yeah. answer. Hey, some of the listeners might not know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's either Sekiwake, Komosubi, or Maegashiro 1 through whatever. Okay, I thought you were about to list out all the possible Maegashiro. Could be right. Maegashiro 1? Nope, nope. Uh, Could even three... be Maegashiro 2. All right. Uh, you and... <laughs> Who answered first? No, we did a three, two, one last time. Yeah, we've been doing that. We'll do Um, three, two, one again. Go for it. Three, two, one. Magashira one. one. (laughs) Dang it. (laughs) All right. Okay, well, at least we're on the same page there. It is two east. Dang. Pretty close, though. I think the... uh... We were I, in I the right the, range. The question was designed for us to uh, guess Sekiwake or something like that. Yeah. Um, so our next question, tallest Rikshi and Makuchi for Aki. I have, I wouldn't even call it a guess. I know who it is. Next, uh, next Thanks. rank here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maegashira 13. So for Maegashira 13, the math would say we've got three options, but anti-Jurio bias says we have 
one option, and that is Takeda Fuji, who went seven and eight from <laughs> Maegashira 12 East. I have him dropping one rank and taking that Maegashira 13 East ranking. So, Maegashira 13 West, we're getting to the point of the Bonds K where we need to start worrying about the Jurio promotees. We have two that deserve to the Maegashira 13 rank, but we have not yet placed all of our Makauchi Rikshi with winning records. So screw those Jurio guys. Let's put Sudugisho at Magashira 13 West. Uh, he had an eight and seven record from Magashira 16. Why not? Let's give him a two rank over promotion, which I think is the largest over promotion on this Bonds K prediction if things fall out the way I expect them to. But screw those Jurio guys. Sudugisho, Magashira 13 West. That's how it works. Hokusei Ho's the tallest guy. Yeah. Uh, what's our next question? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just confirm. Uh, he is 204 centimeters, which is as tall as Akebono or in freedom units. I think it's like what? Six, eight, something like that. Six, eight, six, nine, six, seven. It's certainly actually, six, something. How, um, how many centimeters? 204. 204. Uh, 80 inches, which is six, six, foot, eight, 10. Six eight, yeah, seventy two to yeah, six eight, six eight. Um, who is the second tallest? This is just sheer bonus point. Who do you think is who do you think is next up there? Um, let me look. I I already saw it. I didn't know there was a bonus answer, so I'm not going to answer here. Okay, let me take a look. I think you'll get one. I I would be very surprised if you got the second one though. Oh, are there two? There's two guys that are 193 centimeters. Midori so fully Fu no. four inches shorter than than the tallest guy. Midori, did you say uh, Midori Fuji? <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly Kota Waco. Um, uh, Abi? Nope. Asanoyama? Nope. All right, I'm not gonna keep guessing, guys. Uh, Kin Bozan. Mm, he was. Kin was the that. one I thought you might get. Shonan Naomi is the other one. Okay. Yeah, I knew Shodan I, Umi was sneaky tall. Sneaky tall is yeah, this is what I was gonna say. Koto Shoho, I think, is also kind of sneaky tall. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh heaviest Rikshi and Makauchi. Okay. And again, this is this is the from the previous from Aki. Yes. So the names that are in front of us there. Okay. Okay, next rank. All right, Maigashira 14. So things actually aren't gonna be too complicated for placing our Jurio Rikshi quite yet. So we have the two that deserve to be ranked Maegashira 13. Excuse me. Tomokaze and Ichi Yamamoto. Then the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked is uh, Jurio Rikshi Tohakuryu at Maegashira 16. Then at Maegashira 17, we have two more Rik Jurio Rikshi that deserve to be placed in Roga and Chura no Umi. You have to go to Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Jurio 1 to find the next <laughs> Makauchi Rikshi that deserves to be ranked because every Rikshi with a losing record, Maegashira 13 and below, had at least 10 <clears> – excuse me, had at least 10 losses. Oh, buddy. <laughs> so it's it's a whole lot of Jurio guys at this point. So without any Makauchi Rikshi to muddle things up, let's start placing some Jurio Rikshi. Hey! So <laughs> <laughs> Tomo right. Kaze, yeah, Tomokaze and Ichi Yamamoto should land at Maegashira 14. And Tomokaze was previously on the east side and in the Jurio Joy. Uh, so I have him landing at Maegashira 14 East and Ichi Yamamoto landing at Maegashira 14 West. Very important, I feel like, to point out. This will be the first time in exactly four years that Tomokaze will be in the top division after probably the worst leg injury we've seen in sumo kept him out of action for 14 yeah. months. Was that like the was that the same Basho where we were traveling to Japan in no. 2019? Was it no, like just it, after that? It happened in Kyushu of 2019. So it's oh, I gotcha. like okay. four years to the Basho. I, I see. I gotcha. And yeah, that one. That was at the height of the uh, lower the dohyo debate because his was very much, if not caused, certainly exacerbated very badly by the fact that the dohyo was an extra three feet to fall. Yeah, and this is why we often say uh, knee exploded because that's pretty much what happened to Tomokaze here. Yeah, I remember falling asleep during the list of ligaments that he tore because it was like 35 long. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give your answer for heaviest Rikshi first? Because I think I've got it. I have a tiebreaker uh, tiebreaker condition. If neither of us gets the correct guy, whoever named the heavier guy gets the point. Okay. I feel good about this. All right. I'm going to guess Daishoho. 
I'm going to guess Sudoku Show. All right. So the answer is Dai Shoho. Really? Dai Shoho is bigger than Sudoku Show? 198. So I, uh, kilograms. Um, so I brought up the list. Uh, I put up a Bonske with the heights and weights. Um, so yeah, Dai Shoho. Oh, he's listed at 171 on Sumo DB. Yeah. He's at 171 kilograms. Tsurugisho is listed at 191. Yeah, which is heavier than everybody else. So let me take a quick look here on uh, Wikipedia because sometimes that gets updated sooner. He's listed as 198 on Wikipedia, so that's where it comes from. Oh, Um, for Daishoho? For Daishoho. Yeah, so I'm guessing that... um, I'm guessing that Sumo DB might only update at like the January weigh-ins or something like that. That could be the case. Here, I know the best place to look, and that's the official Japan like uh, Japan Association website. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it does, for for reference in Wikipedia, also say that yes, he is the heaviest Makuchi wrestler. Uh, he's not the heaviest active Sekitori. Regardless, I want you to take a guess at who that is. Uh, active Sekitori. So somebody um, in Jurio of the Akibasho, at least. Yeah. Mitorio is my guess. Oh, yep. Yep. You got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just look at Dai Shoho here. See if that pulls anything up. Find Rikshi. Okay. Uh, come on. Just make this easy. <laughs> so on. Yep. He's listed as 198 on. And that's what I would take, 198. Yeah, so he's packing them on this year, it looks like. He's 187. So, okay, that surprises me, but point to Jake. There you go. Uh, I mean, Tsurugisho and Terano Fuji were my other guesses. Yeah. Uh, Terano Fuji, for the record, is only listed at 173, so that's not a very good guess. That's smaller than Takiyasu, smaller than Aoyama. Uh, who else well, is he's up one. There? He's 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 one seventy three on Sumo DB. Is that where he's at? Takeshi shows listed at one eighty three. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. Just, I guess that's just the quickest way that it has them all in one spot. Yeah. But Takakesho heavier than Terano Fuji. Not wouldn't have guessed that one. Yeah. Anyway, he's a he's a round boy. <laughs> he can confirm. Have eyes. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, Tamawashi is the oldest Rikshi in Makuuchi. Who's the second oldest? Second oldest in Maku Uchi. Okay. Uh, let's go through the Micah Shear 15 ranks, and then I will give I'm an pretty answer. pretty confident on mine. I think I am. I'm too. pretty confident that he's second or third. <laughs> yeah. All Anyways. Right. Ma- Micah Shear 15. Uh, 15 East should go to Toha Kuryu, as he is the next Rikshi that deserved to be ranked and is two ranks clear of any other Maku Uchi Rikshi. And then at Micah Shira 15 West, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk. So Roga and Churano Umi are the next two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked, but Nishiki Fuji deserves to be just one rank below them, and Nishiki Fuji was in the Maku Uchi division, so which would typically mean I would put Nishiki Fuji ahead of both of these Jurio Rikshi. But last Basho, Kageyaki, who was the Jurio 1 East Rikshi, only deserved to be one rank ahead of Sudugisho, not the heaviest Rikshi in the top division, who had gone <laughs> 5 and 10 and was on the west side. So in my prediction, I had put Sudugisho ahead of Kageyaki because that's what I always do with Jurio Rikshi. But the Botske committee put Kageyaki ahead of Sudugisho. This Basho, Roga, is the Jurio 1 East Rikshi, and he only deserves to be one rank ahead of Nishiki Fuji, who went 5-10 and ten and is on the west side of the Bonske. So I'm going to take my cue from the Bonske committee and put Roga ahead of Nishiki Fuji on my prediction and put him at Maigashira 15 West. Gotcha. All right. All right. So who are you thinking two, for second oldest guy? 3-2-1. Let's do it. All right, three, two, one, Aoyama. Aoyama. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yep, 37 years old. Just next turned 37 in June. Sada Naomi, I think, would be next. Sada Naomi's up there. Uh, Takara Fuji's up you, there. Takara Fuji, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, since that one was so quick, I'm, I'll bring it up here real quick. Um, Bonske, let's add your birth date to that. Let's refresh. 
Okay, so let's see. Aoyama was born in 86. Miyogiryu is only four months younger. Hmm. Uh, Sadanomi is about a year and a half younger uh, than Aoyama, I mean. Um, who else did we list? Ta- Takara Fuji. Takara Fuji. He was 87. Yeah, there you go. So he's still, he's a... Uh, almost a year younger than Aoyama. But yeah, those, uh, I mean, we were certainly barking up the right tree. Yeah, Um, because we got the answer right. Well, yeah, but I mean, like with our other guesses. And it doesn't look like there's anybody else born prior to 1990 in the top division. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Let's see, are there anyone? uh, Shima Noomi is actually, uh, I I just went down to Juryo real quick. Shima Noomi is born before 1990. Azumario, 87. Uh, There you go. Ita Nowaka, uh, part of the 2000 club alongside of Ono Sato. Ten Shoho in 2002. Same as oh, Fuji. That's super young. Wow. Obviously, yeah. Haku Oho at 2003. The youngest guy. So the next question here. Who's the youngest, Richie? Who's Ooh. the second youngest? Because we all know Haku Oho Ooh. is the youngest. Okay. Um. Let me close that so I don't look at it. Yeah, I also had to, as soon as I read that, I'm like, oh, stop that. (laughs) Stop reading. Yep. Okay, Uh, next rank. Maiga Shira 16. So I had mentioned that Chirana Umi only deserved to be one rank ahead of Nishiki Fuji, but I'm not going to put Chirana Umi ahead of Nishiki Fuji like I did with Roga. So the only reason I put Roga ahead is because he was in the Juryo Joy, and that's what they did with Kageyaki last time, which... I have recently discovered the Jurio Joy. I believe that is a real thing, and I think they get a little bit nicer treatment than the rest of the Jurio promotees. Jordan Umi was ranked Jurio 5, and outside of any Jurio Joy that may exist. So for me, he needs to be two ranks ahead of any Makauchi Rikshi that I rank him ahead of. So that means I have Nishiki Fuji taking the Maegashira 16 East rank, dropping only three ranks after a 5 and 10 record. Probably getting a little lucky here. And then I do have Chirana Umi taking the Maegashira 16 West rank, as he is now two ranks clear of any other Makauchi Rikshi. Okay. So, who is the second youngest Rikshi in the top division? Yes. Okay. I know it comes down between two because I was just looking at a bunch of birthdays, and I saw two birthdays that looked like they're uh, the correct answer. I just don't know which one was born earlier in the year, so it's going to be a a coin flip. I know that Hoshoryu and Oho were both right about the same age, but Oho is younger than Hoshoryu trying to think if anybody else here would be younger than them i think i might just have to stick with oho Ooh, i take it back i have a better guess do you have a better guess than oho i have the other side of the coin that i'm flipping in my head okay (laughs) all Uh, right should we count down and and list them off all right three two one atami fuji oh okay Nope, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm just straight up dumb. It's a Tommy Fuji. Is it? Yeah, well, let's just, let's it's find a Tommy out. Fuji. I'm dumb. I, I like how I answer the question one way, and you're like, you're correct, and I was not, and and I'm like, oh, cool, you confirmed it for me because you yeah. know, um, a Tommy Fuji is younger than Oho. Yeah. Um, the other one in my head was Hira do Umi. Like the last thing I had looked at, we were talking about young. Richie. That would have been younger than Oho. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the last thing. I was looking at on the Bonske with all the birthdays uh, before you said like, Hey, we got to figure out the second youngest Rikshi uh, was Oho and Hira to Umi who are both born in like 2000. Yeah. Hira to Umi is like two months younger. Yeah. And then I had completely forgot that I already said Atami Fuji was born in 2002. So, <laughs> uh, Oh, well, what's our, what's our score right now, Jake? It's probably pretty close to tied. I think I have us at seven and seven. Son of a bitch. Which doesn't make sense because we've had 16 questions. Well, there was, there's w- one or two where we're just like, nobody gets a point. That's true. And I don't know if I wrote it down if it was a nobody or a both. Okay. Uh, but I definitely have written down when only one of us has gotten the point. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. In that regards, we'll, we'll, I, I think we're pretty much tied. Um, so I do have three more questions, which okay. means that I think this was numbered incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the Heya with the most Rikshi in Makauchi? 
I'm gonna close my bonds case so I can't look and just kind of have to try to think off the top of my head. I have, I have. Well, I mean, we got the list of the guy. I mean, I have. Oh my god, I'm looking. It's right on my. Yeah, I can. I I can close like the super DB bonds case, but then I'm also looking at what I had prepared visually for YouTube, which is the exact bonds case. Okay. Let me pour through this before Jake has uh, too much chance to study the bonds case. So okay, well, we only got the one more rank to cover, anyways. Yep. So my Gashira seventeen. The east side, this is going to be the last spot on my Bonds K prediction, and this one is tough. Uh, it's going to be a toss-up between a Makuuchi Rikshi and a Jurio Rikshi. So it comes down to Aoyama, who went 5-10 and 10 from Maegashira 14 and deserves to be ranked Jurio 2, and Kita Nowaka, who went 8-7 and 7 from Jurio 2 and deserves to be ranked Jurio 1. So we have another situation. The Jurio Rikshi deserves to be one rank ahead of the Makuuchi Rikshi, and the Jurio Rikshi was in the Jurio Joy. So Kita Nowaka is very similar to Roga, but also Roga was the top Jurio guy. And Roga at least had a record that deserved to be in the top division, whereas Kita Nawaka still has a record that deserves to be in Jurio. So maybe they think, well, we're not going to bring you up to the top division. Your record doesn't deserve it, even though this Makauchi Rikshi deserves to be ranked lower than you. So I I, I really have – this is like the most true 50-50 in my head uh, <laughs> that we might have ever come across. And if that is the case, then I need to go with the Makauchi Rikshi and trust an anti-Jurio bias – or I could go with what I want to happen, and I don't like Aoyama that much, and I do like Kita Nawaka, so I'm going to be dumb, and I'm going to go with what I want to happen and go with Kita Nawaka for the final spot because I don't know what's going to happen, and I might as well be happy thinking it's going to be Kita Nawaka before I'm ultimately, ultimately disappointed when it's Aoyama. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, All right. You know what? I don't I, – I, I, I appreciate – how how much you can start off with like logical precedent and stuff like that and then just no <laughs> i don't want to do that i wouldn't like this yeah all right so our our last question in regulation i guess i'll call it <laughs> which heya uh had the most rikshi and makauchi for aki hold on i'm doing math in my head because there's a group that just came came in my mind oh no no i got it Okay, uh, three, two, one. Sure. All right, three, two, one. Isekahama. Isekahama. God, every mm. yeah. It's uh, like we joined and participate and do the same podcast with each other all the time. <laughs> the other one that I initially thought was Oitekaze because that's Daisho, Endo, Toby. <laughs> Those are the two answers tied for five. Okay, because I was gonna say uh, <laughs> Daisho, Endo, Toby Zaru, Daishoho. Um, who's the other one in Oitakaze? Tsurugi Show. Okay, that was the other one I was thinking it could be. All right. And Isagahama is Atami Fuji, Midori Fuji, Nishiki Fuji, Takara Fuji, and Oho. No, oh. I'm kidding. It's Terno Fuji. Yeah. It's all the Fujis. <laughs> Oho's up there by himself, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Poor lonely little boy. Yeah. So we have predicted that six Jurio Rikshi will be promoted to the top division. I'm confident five of them will be not so sure on the sixth one, but if we have six Jurio Rikshi being promoted, that means we're going to have six Makauchi Rikshi demoted. Those being Hakuoho, Aoyama, Koto Shoho, Chiyo Shoma, Kageyaki, and Dai Shoho. Uh, Jake, before we, th- we get to what you think I potentially got wrong, why don't we go through two our last two quiz questions. How many foreign rikshi are in Makuuchi? <laughs> this one I feel like is kind of I've kind of spoiled this because I have the I have it on the other screen who's in oh. the top division. <laughs> so what do you say? Uh if you can are I are you averting your eyes from your Bonske? I can now. I mean you I, don't have to. I mean I didn't it's... get very far in looking. Uh, how how do you want to do this? I right, just see how many you can name off the top of your head. All right. Uh, without looking, uh, Terra no Fuji, he's One. Mongolian. Uh, Kirishima Hoshoryu is Mongolian. Kirishima is Mongolian. Takakesho, Daisho, Kotonowaka. Uh, these ones I'm saying under my breath are not guesses. Wakutonoyu, I know you're just going through the list. Abi Hokuno Fuji, Asanoyama. It's not fair because I put this entire bond skate together, so I know exactly where everybody is. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not going to go one by one. I'm just going to say off the top of my head, uh, Chiyoshoma, Aoyama, Keen Bozon. I believe Dai Shoho is Mongolian. Uh, anybody, I don't know if Hoku Seho counts. Cause I know he's like part Mongolian, but he also has Japanese heritage. I'm not sure if he counts as a foreign Rikshi. I can tell you he heya. doesn't because okay. I know that his flag comes up Japan on Nato Sumo. Okay. So I think I've come up with like seven so far. And I think I missed I think I think you missed one and it's one that you're gonna beat yourself up over. All right, give me a couple more seconds to think about it. It's not flashing in my head. Multiple U shows. Tamawashi's Mongolian. There you go. Okay. That's eight. All right. All right. Last question to think about for a little bit while we go through the rest of it. Uh, which recently retired Rikshi within the last three years plans to run the 2024 Tokyo Marathon? Hmm. I think I have it. Um, all right. So, Jake, what do you think I it most likely got wrong in the Spons K? I will say up front, like I've been take I've been having some pretty big misses over the past couple of Bonds Ks, and I I just. I know I said this after the last one, and then I had a few big misses. I don't feel like there's as much room for big misses on this one. There's a couple of spots where there it's kind of gets bunched up, but I, I do feel like uh, if I got somebody wrong there, it's like by a rank uh, yeah. and not too much more than that. I, I feel like this Bonds K isn't overly difficult. There's a pretty good spread of like where the Rikshi deserve to go. Um and things kind of laid out for the most part. It's just how are they going to deal with some of these tiebreakers, which might make a rank or two difference, but I, I don't see that there's anything could be three rank difference on this. Yeah, I think for me, the the thing that uh, the thing that I am most skeptical about is the Jurio interchange. Um, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, just six guys seems... It seems like they'll find a way not to do that, <laughs> you know. But the math, uh, Jacob. I know. I'm. I'm just saying. No, that <laughs> Aoyama versus Kitano Waka one. You picked with your heart, and you know how that always ends up for you. I know. I know. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm going with it. We'll find out Sunday. All right, let's wrap up real quick, and then I accidentally spoiled the answer for myself. So we'll see what your guess is for who ran the mar or who's planning to run the marathon in only like five months from now. All right, so the Bonds K for the Kyushu Basho is going to be released on October 30th for the Kyushu Bonds Basho that is starting on November 12th. So we're just a few weeks away from more sumo action, a few weeks away from potential Yokozuna promotion for Taka K Show. Pretty cool. So if you enjoyed this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting service. You can also like, comment, and subscribe to our youtube channel grand sumo breakdown uh you can reach us on many social media platforms such as instagram twitter facebook just search grand sumo breakdown we have a blog at grand sumo breakdown.wordpress.org uh if we have if you have dot any com. dot com whatever if you have any comments questions or corrections you can send us an email at grand sumo breakdown at gmail.com or you can send us a voicemail at 805-613-613 seven eight six six that's eight oh five six one three sumo jake i believe the answer for the retired rikshi that is planning on running a marathon is yutakayama why are you picking that one i've seen a lot of photos of him getting uh slim and trim on twitter and i feel like i heard something about him running but He's looking like he's in good shape. I can't imagine T Chiyo Tadu running a marathon, so I'm going with you, Takayama. You are correct. All right. So he retired in Kyushu of 2022 at 180 kilos or 400 pounds. He just ran a uh, half marathon on October 15th uh, at 243 pounds or 110 kilos. Uh, this question was submitted by Flarek, who noted that that is five minutes faster than Flarek can run a half marathon. <laughs> and Flarek runs a lot. He does. Uh, in parentheses, he says, WTF, pro athletes are sick. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so he is aiming for by March for the Tokyo marathon, uh, to be down another, uh, almost 50 pounds. He's aiming for 90 kilos or 198 pounds. Um, he said after the last race, he ate a pound and a half of curry for recovery. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's crazy to be, uh, to, to lose half his weight, uh, in, barely a year and a half that's that's yeah less than a year and a half that's insane that is extreme discipline and uh yeah you see that the extremes that uh sumo wrestlers push their body to to be yep. the best at the sport people who retire from sumo either like stay the exact same size like musashi maru or like they melt and like they're just gone like takanohana is yeah. like a slim slim for a normal sized man <laughs> uh, despite yeah. being a Yokozuna at like, you know, pretty decent size. So mm -hmm. wild. All right. So I got that right. We're going to, we're going to count that as a win for Ryan here. Uh, Jake was cheating the whole time. Obviously I only uh, cheated on a cut. Um, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I only cheated on the first one. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to own up to that. I definitely Googled that. And then it was after the first question. I'm like, Hey, what do we feel about Google? <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, that's one that you got right and I got wrong. So that means that we're back to tied. <laughs> no, -uh. we we hadn't specified the Google rules. It counts. Uh, ah, damn. You, you got just, me. That's right. You weren't smart enough to do it when I did. Uh, so, yeah, that's all that we've got for this episode. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We'll be back in about a week to review this Bonske. Bye. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.